Welcome back to Egypt Old Kingdom. This episode is really going to mark a key turning point in the game and in the history of ancient Egypt. We're now beginning the dynastic era, the great building era of ancient Egypt, if you will. And it's also really feels at this point it's the beginning of the rest of the game from a gameplay standpoint. We're really going to be focusing on managing the economy on the large scale, competing with the different interests. Can we grow the economy and still put all the resources we need into these building projects. So somebody did mention to me that I did leave this poor worker out here doing nothing after we looked at the petroglyphs. Sorry about that. But I appreciate the pointer so I could fix it. Now we're going to head back into Memphis also since the Nile is open to us now. Not for trade, but for actually directly working those regions. We're going to want to yank a bunch of these workers then out of Memphis and spread them out throughout the kingdom, as it were. And so we're going to pull anybody that's not doing anything particularly essential. Now, this, of course, is where our first of the tombs is going to be built, but we do have a little bit of time. I would like to build a pasture here first, and that way we're getting some resources from this area while we're building. And you can come with us as well. You can kind of stay here. Want to leave everybody in the barracks, leave everybody in the workshops, keep them doing their thing. The more lucrative farms, the temple, the palace, you can all stay. Ten should be enough. So let's get to work deploying along the Nile. And of course, expeditions where we can. And all of these overall being very nice areas, especially with the military in here, along with the production and the food. Very useful. And coming down here, you're still scouting. Now, we could trade here. This is not the best area, though, overall. You can see we're not getting that much, really not even enough food to quite feed yourself. The favor is nice, but it's not enough, particularly with what we're already putting in. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. So I'd rather use you elsewhere. Now we have our quest, the Copper of the Sinai. And the way this is worded is very important. Take control over the Sinai Mountains and mine production using expeditions. So you have to take control of them. You can't just do the expedition part. And that was easy for me to miss at first, at least. So we've got very nice production we can see here, but we don't have access to it because they're independent. We could try to conquer them. Well, you can see the military numbers aren't in our favor. Be tough to swing that. Possible, but tough. We're going to have to take the improved relations aspect, which means we're also going to have to assimilate them afterwards. It's going to cost us quite a lot of luxuries. We're going to have to bite the bullet and do it, though. And then up here, this is a really double-edged decision. And I think that we can do it the optimal route, but it's going to be tough. Now... Big production numbers again, even bigger than the Sinai. We got the nice cedar here. We've got it as a traveling location where we can go to Syria and then Alashia and Anatolia and onwards from the lands of Amu of the Toad people. We can trade right away, and I mean, that's just that's fantastic. But to actually get the most benefit out of it, we would need to take control of the region so that we can travel and gain some resources do that, well, you can see that's not cheap. They're at 66%, so we're going to be here for a while doing this. And the question is, is it better to make that investment and forego the initial resources we could get for a bigger gain later? And I'm not sure that it is. If you approach it from the human aspect of a king living in this time, it'd basically be, it's a big gamble because you're making investment that's not going to pay off while you're alive. It's like your descendants or your descendants' descendants are going to benefit from it, if anybody does. But I think we can make it work, and I think it'll be better in the long run. I'm not sure. We're going to go for it. And then I'm going to scout out more this way. One more worker left to plop back down in here. And looking forward, the climate will not always be good. So I want to work on some more farming areas. We've got the basic ones around here. I'd like more like this one, though, where we can get some favor and some extra food from the livestock. So I'm going to worship these antelopes down here. And then also we'll grab the Osiris cult. Now, somebody did ask, 
four percent per time you got to do it like 25 times to actually get a double amount isn't it better to just invest in some of these you're going to make up your investment well how effective this is will actually accelerate as we go forward we start to see that coming later on in this episode and i think we're now ready to proceed Okay, we've explored, and that's right here. It's the same location, Upper Nubia. 83 culture, very nice. Now this is a fantastic, not fantastic, but very good trading area. You can see we got the three production. Now we could go with this. Do I want to spend five turns instead of you know, getting that production? I don't think so. And then I also do want to scout here, which means we're going to be playing some yo-yo here. We're going to yank you out. There we go. Memphis completes that expedition. And we have colonized this here. And I do not really apologize. Sorry, not sorry for the pun here. We have a nice strategic reserve of nice. The luxuries expedition available. But in order to fully access all of our resources here, we're going to need to clear out the sand first. So once again... Paying a cost up front to get a larger return later. Let's hit Osiris one more time. And then we could research here that slavery is still the low-hanging fruit that's the cheapest one, but I really want to head up this direction. That tax revenue is so inviting. And there's our pasture. We also have enough for another worker. So we're going to slide you over here and get back to work on that. But then we need to work on our whole tombs scenario here. So we've got, we can accelerate the construction. Basically do it in half the time. You can see the cost and look at that negative event chance. Ouch. So this is an emergency only type of scenario. Don't advise using it. If you can avoid it, and with careful planning, I think you can avoid it. So let's customize what we're going to have. There's a lot going on in here. Tomb of Aha. Okay, first of all, we saw that we were doing eight tombs in the last episode. And we also saw that there was a list of the eight kings of Egypt. And they said that they were Narmer, Menace, Aha. Aha was listed third, but we're doing Aha's tomb first. How does that fit? We'll get to more of that as we proceed through. But you have the four categories you can choose. And these gray or silver ones mean you don't have the research for it. And in terms of being able to build what they want you to build, you know, the historical value, which is what I'm going to be using as much as possible, we actually have everything we're supposed to plus one extra. Because we're not supposed to have the Palace of Eternity just yet. So we're doing fine in terms of our cultural advancement to keep up with the times. The size will give us... Favor and a boost to the Osiris cult. The shape will give us favor and a boost to the Osiris cult. And then these two give you culture and a boost to the Osiris cult. So it's basically in the two halves here. We have a small row of building, 30 to 80 meters long. And you can see the cost there, 15 production, plus one turn to construction time. You've got the upkeep. And you've got the bonus. And the plus 0.1% for the Osiris cult. For example, let's say we left this as it is right now. Actually, we're going to. We get 0.4% to the Osiris cult. That means every time you worship, after this temple is finished, or this tomb is finished, you're going to have 4.4% boost instead of 4%. Okay, well that's not that much. But imagine several tombs down the line as that multiplies and multiplies and feeds into itself. It's going to be a really big bonus. And that's why Osiris is so powerful as you stack those advantages up moving forward the building age. So here... If you put no casing, you get no bonus at all. Or we have the limestone, which costs us luxuries. And then food and luxuries for our upkeep and culture bonus and all of that. And then here, the subterranean dwelling. You know, we got the vertical shaft, sarcophagus. It's fairly plain, relatively speaking. The Palace of Eternity, well, it's, it's like a palace. It's much more extravagant in every way. It's deeper. You know, it also costs a lot more, and it's two more turns to construction time. And even if we wanted to do this, we don't have the time to make them all this way. We could fit in some of them that way, 
but we're not going to be able to afford the luxuries cost. So this is just, it's not really an option for us. We're going to dial that back a bit, stick with the historical setting, and onward we go with the Tomb of Aha. And we need to remember that we just customized it. We didn't actually tell them to build it. So let's build it here. All right. And look at the hit. <laughs> luxuries are going to cost us. Now, there is a achievement related to not using any you know, of your assistance from your patron deity. We're not going to get that because we're going to need the luxuries between the tombs and all the other investigations we're doing up here with Sinai and the toad people. We need all the luxuries we can get. So we're going to use this. We gain luxuries at the cost of production and favor. Now, favor, we have a pretty good amount coming in. And then also, if you look at this, we're losing almost 12 production a turn from spoilage because we had so much coming in from our expeditions. So we're actually going to save a bit on that. It's not going to cost us the full 30. We're going to, because we're going to reduce that spoilage number a little bit. So what I want to do is keep this maybe half a third of this number. And then we're going to try to watch this turn to turn, you know, get this up close to 100 if we can keep it there. Keep a decent amount of luxuries around for all the of what we're expending. And once we finish these two regions, of course, it should get a little more palatable for us. Onward we go. We are now fully into the third millennium BCE. Friendly relations. We have... Okay, we've got another worker. And we're still working down here. I think another looking forward concept is that we're going to want down the road to have control of this area. So I'm going to want to worship there. Also have enough here to grab another research. And I'm going to get this cattle count for that tax revenue. Before I do that, though, let's take a look at what the benefit is. And it's just going to increase our numbers that we get from all of these territories. So, for example, if you look up here... You know, Buto, we've got uh, 5.3 production, 1.9 army, 2 food. And then once we do grab this, as you might expect, it boosts all those numbers by 10%. You add those additions up across all of the regions that we now control up and down the Nile and eventually further, you can really see that that is going to have a major boost for us. The statewide cattle count, King's introduced regular cattle counts, Biennially, sailed with his retinue along the river, inspecting and tacting subject territories. In other words, better bureaucracy, better accounting, better flow of all of the economic goods into the king's royal treasury. You know what? I think I will hammer Osiris once more. Okay, we got hit by the treachery of Seth. And what is left of Seth? Zero. Let's make sure we re-up that before we do anything else. Okay, and successful expedition here. But I think we are still going to want... Hmm. I'm going to stick with it there for now. Another worker? I want to keep scouting out here. This is a long-term one, but it's going to be worth it. And here, boost to our luxuries. And we have an interesting option. We can expedite collection, risking the lives of our fishermen to collect pearls faster. It'll gain us plus three of these wonderful red bottles of luxuries that are so vital to us right now. We're going to do it. It's, I mean, 2%, one every 50 turns that we would lose. That seems like such a small amount when you're the king. I bet if you're the fisherman, it doesn't seem like a small amount. But we're still going with it, looking at it from our top-down management view. Okie dokie. So, we've explored there, and we want to keep exploring here. I'm also going to need to do some work here, which is going to require yanking you out of here. And we have one turn left on our temple. So we have another possibility for gaining luxury resources. 
we need to colonize this area first though before we do anything else so let's get to work on that we definitely need to You know, it's questionable if even that's enough. I'm going to do it again. And you can see, obviously, we're definitely going down on our production. You know, we have enough, but not enough to sustain this type of investment, turning it into luxuries. We're going to get another one here, though. We have, you know, gradual, more expeditions that are coming in. This one's only a few turns away, although that's, you know, luxuries, not production. But I think we're going to have enough to ride all this out. You are at 74% and you're at 81%. Still have quite a ways to go on all of those. And there's our first temple. Tomb. They're tombs, not temples. I'm eventually going to say that right. The Tomb of Aha. Memphis 2984 BCE. Now this is a bit of an exaggerated representation of it if you look at the diagram here it's actually three rectangular buildings three different ones that is the actual tomb of Aha. and the reason why they are in that arrangement from what i understand is that there wasn't a lot of quality timber available locally so it was very expensive to try to get some from outside of egypt and import it Difficult to make large roofs without it. It's interesting that Aha's tomb is larger than Narmer's. And you can interpret that a variety of different ways. You know, maybe Narmer was the one busy with the unification and it was still tumultuous during his reign, but Aha consolidated, it was more peaceful. They were able to devote more to building it. You could also argue from the other perspective that people thought of Aha as being more significant than Narmer at the time. I mean, I think the first explanation is probably more close to the truth, but who knows. Now, Aha is also the king where we have the first clear evidence of retinue sacrifices, which we talked about in the previous episode. That is, a lot of his servants were killed with him at the time of his death. We're not sure precisely in what manner, but they were buried near him. So that is the thing that began to happen at this time. Tombs of First and Second Dynasties, rulers of both Upper and Lower Egypt, to retain a full extent of power after death, need royal tombs in both lands. Where are we going to bury the kings? And then where are we going to have an empty cenotaph? Now this is a simplification of history, because in actuality, in the First Dynasty, they were buried near Abydos, and the Second Dynasty near the Saqqara. But they're giving you a choice here in the game I think this is appropriate use of history, in my opinion, in this case, to give you benefit of resources. Do we want the plus two population limit, or do we want the favor? I'm going to take the favor, and while that's ahistorical for the first dynasty, it would fit just fine with the second dynasty. So the royal necropolis of Skara. Kings of the first dynasty decide to create their cemetery near the new capital in Memphis. And from there, the spirits of kings will have an easier time controlling the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. More importantly, we get our favor. And they begin working on the next tomb immediately, unless you tell them to do something else and intercede. The tomb of Dejer, in this case. Seven more to go for the first dynasty. King Eha built one of his tombs on the precipice of a rocky plateau in the Saqqara. From such a height, the king had a bird's eye view of his domain, eternally watching over it, an occult funerary estate, etc. In other words, lots of pomp and circumstance involved. Another expedition. And we have cleared the sands here in the land of the Great Lion. Where we're going to begin now our expeditions for nice. And we do have enough food for a worker, which takes us up to our maximum. So... Do we want to work on the Oryx more in Memphis? Tough call, but I think I'm actually going to put another one out here scouting since we have taken that worker off of scouting to stay where they are. Huh. The Scarab people have decided to be mad at us. Great. Well, at least they're still at neutral relations, so they're unlikely to attack. Let's grab another, maybe two more masterpieces, actually. 
And I think that's probably going to be a good point to leave off for the next episode. Thanks everyone for watching. Egypt Old Kingdom will return and will continue to proceed through the tombs of the First Dynasty. See you then.